Order. Mr Speaker, I rise to speak to the third reading of the Electricity Industry Bill and signal that Labor, Labor will be opposing its introduction. Throughout the consideration of this bill, Labor members have measured their consideration against three key pillars that we believe underpin responsible reform in the sector. First, does the bill balance the security of supply and transmission? Second, does the bill address affordability and the predictability of electricity pricing? And third, does the bill enhance the sustainable production of electricity? This bill does not pass that threshold and instead promotes competition, streamlines governance and progresses structural shifts of assets, all of which we would argue does not constrain the price of electricity and rests the security of supply on thermal generation. We just don't think that that's a responsible way forward. We have concerns with the proposal to disestablish the Electricity Commission in lieu of the Electricity Authority and the narrow focus of the authority which will now not consider issues of fairness and sustainability in the supply of electricity. Although I presented an SOP to include this as a focus for the new authority, the suggestion was rejected by government members with little reason. Our concern is that it will be more difficult to ensure that the industry operates in a sustainable manner aiming to limit carbon emissions for any new electricity generation. On the issue of fairness, we do not believe that the fair delivery of power to consumers will be achieved. The authority will not be required to monitor the environmental impacts of electricity generation to ensure greater sustainability in the long term. This further highlights Labour's concern that the government refuses to take leadership on achieving the 90% renewable electricity generation in any serious way, and it may well remain an aspirational goal with no co coherent targets. A key concern raised by Labour members is the ongoing pressure that households are feeling regarding their monthly power bill. Baycorp Limited are projecting that it will be increasingly difficult for many households to pay their power bills and household expenses. I propose that the code which guides the authority be amended to include fair consumer pricing and sustainable electricity generation. This would have gone some way to ensure fair consumer pricing would be actively considered by the authority. Instead, the government's solution is to encourage greater competition and somehow consumers may see better pricing options. I remain sceptical about that view. Labour members also raised the issues regarding smart metres and a smart grid. We agree with the recommendation of the Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment and proposed that provision be made for a smart grid enabling mechanism to be included in the industry participant code. This was rejected by government members because they believe that rather than future-proofing our grid for the benefit of consumers and retailers, we take a fast-follower approach while technology is developed. That lack of leadership means that right now we have dumb metres rolling out in some of our regions. That just doesn't make sense when the Minister could grab the ball by the horns. A substantial debate on asset reconfiguration has been repeatedly ignored by the Minister. And government members who don't, do not accept that there is no evidence that efficiency gains through swapping Tikapur A and B will be achieved. The Treasury Regulatory Impact Team who considered the bill noted that the bill was lacking in certain areas. In particular, they presented information that more comprehensive discussion was needed to assess the risk of asset swaps. There was no cost-benefit analysis to assess whether asset swaps would fix the problem the government believes it is addressing, and that there is no assessment of other examples where asset swaps have delivered efficiency gains. The upshot is that it doesn't make sense to swap assets between SOEs when there is no evidence of its benefits. The Minister claims that he has received no concerns from Meridian over the asset reconfiguration. But a letter sent from the Chair of Meridian Energy, from Wayne Boyd, in December last year to Ministers Power and English, suggests that splitting the management of the Waitaki chain across two operators will result in a loss of efficiency in managing the water resource. And from an, en and from an energy perspective, Meridian Energy will need to hold its lakes higher in order to counter 
the security of supply risk that it had outlined. Advice went on to highlight that this will result in a much higher likelihood of spill and the loss of efficiency. Ari Sargent, CEO of PowerShop, slammed the reforms proposed by the government, saying there was a high risk that they would lead to both higher prices and to less secure power supply. Well, it was evident that these comments starkly contrasted those of the Minister, and Mr Sargent's criticisms criticisms were quickly removed from his blog. Mr Speaker, we have consistently raised through the debate in the House our concern with the rising cost of power prices to those that are more vulnerable, those on fixed incomes. Baycorp Holdings CEO Jeff Harper noted in his uh, press statement, the number of New Zealand households unable or unwilling to pay power bills on time is set to increase over the next six months, according to the, their debt recovery agency. Rising electricity prices fuelled by the ETS, levies and the increase in GST are likely to result in people defaulting on their power bills in order to pay more pressing bills, such as mortgages and groceries, the company says. Mr Speaker, our, our concern that, that the differential between domestic and industry users will not be fixed by this particular bill remains. We still don't think uh, that the solution offered by the Minister will go anywhere near addressing these very important issues. The bill increases bureaucracy, has little evidence to suggest that asset swaps will be, an effic will be efficient and without risk. It lacks leadership in progressing all new energy generation be from renewable sources. It fails to address fairness to consumers and the huge differential between domestic and industrial electricity users. It fails to address price predictability at a time when people need greater assurance. For those reasons and several more, Labor will not be voting for the legislation.